Here's an application of continuity to solve inequalities. So, I want to find all x such that the absolute value of x minus 2 is greater than 2x minus 8. We'll have two solutions. For the long method, we'll just pull apart the definition of absolute value of x minus 2 and solve the corresponding inequalities. For the quick method, we'll exploit the continuity of the functions on each side of the inequality. So, absolute value of x minus 2 and 2x minus 8 are continuous functions of x. So, if I want to know where one is greater than or less than the other, okay, I can't go from less than to greater than without going through a point where we're equal. So, our first step is to find all the points where our two functions are equal. Once I have those points, we'll subdivide the real line, and then it'll be enough just to check for greater than or less than for one point in each region. Okay, by continuity, we'll have greater than or less than for the entire region decided by that point. Now, if I solve for where the absolute value of x minus 2 is equal to 2x minus 8, what we can do is I'll set up two equations, one with a plus sign, one with a minus sign. So here, we're kind of glossing over the definition a little bit. We know in one case, when our x minus 2 is positive, we leave it alone. In the other case, when x minus 2 is negative, we multiply by a minus 1, which takes off the minus sign. So here, we're not going to worry about whether x minus 2 is positive or negative. We're just going to solve, and then when we're done, we'll see if our answers make sense. Now, for the first one, if we solve, I get x equal to 6. So if I put that back in the original equation, we have 4 equals 4, so that's a solution. For the second equation, we'll get x equal to 10 thirds, so it's roughly 3.3. If I put this back into the original equation, we'll have 4 thirds equals minus 4 thirds, so that's not a solution. Now, if you forget to throw it away, not a problem. That just gives you a little bit more work when you subdivide. So if I subdivide the real line, okay, we're gonna have a break at six, and then if you didn't throw it away, you'll also have another one at 10 thirds. I pick a point in each region. So I'll go with zero, four, and eight, and then we test each point in our inequality. So two greater than minus eight, yes, so we keep it. Two greater than zero, yes, so we keep it. Six greater than eight, no, so we're going to throw away the region where we have x strictly greater than 6. Now, if we consider each region that we're keeping, we're going to have as our answer x strictly less than 6. Okay, if you're worried about the endpoint, you can just check it. So if I put 6 into our inequality, we're asking is 4 strictly greater than 4? The answer is no, so we're not going to keep that point. So that's our answer. Our first check is just to look at the graphs. So if I graph the absolute value of x minus 2, okay, we're going to have our v, but it's going to be anchored at x equal to 2. So recall, all we're doing here, having x minus 2 in the middle means take the graph of absolute value of x, shift to the right by 2. Another way to think of that, if we put a 2 in there, we're going to have value coming out is zero, so it's going to be at this point here. If we graph 2x minus 8, that's a straight line with y-intercept at minus 8, slope is equal to 2. If I solve for this equal to zero, we'll have the x-intercept at x equal to 4. And I just go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, and they're going to intersect at x equal to 6. So all we're asking here is, when is the graph of the v above the graph of the line? That's going to be whenever x is strictly less than 6. Let's recall our usual approach. So, if I take the absolute value of box, if box is greater than or equal to 0, we leave it alone, so we just get box back. Box is negative, we multiply by a minus 1 to remove the minus sign. So I'll have minus box. If we put x minus 2 into the box, okay, we'll have 
these two ways to think of our function. So when x is greater than or equal to 2, it's equal to x minus 2. When x is strictly less than 2, it's minus parentheses x minus 2. In the first case, okay, we'll solve x minus 2 greater than 2x minus 8. So that's going to give me x strictly less than 6. But for our answer, we have to consider both inequalities at the same time. So I want to know for what x do we have x greater than or equal to 2 and strictly less than 6. So we'll get all x that's between 2 and 6, including the 2. Okay, so I could think of it as take these two regions and then we just consider all points that are common to both regions. Then if I consider when x is strictly less than 2 of minus x minus 2 greater than 2x minus 8, I solve, we get x strictly less than 10 over 3. So we consider where both our inequalities are true at the same time. So if x less than 3 and a third, x less than 2, to consider all points that are common to both regions, we'll have x strictly less than 2. Now, if we take these points, put them together with these points, outcomes are x strictly less than 6, and that's what we had from before.